kids' educational games. You're already an expert at recognizing the patterns around you. You've noticed them on animals, in buildings, and in the hours of the day and seasons of the year. Much of what we know about the universe we've learned by identifying patterns. Recognizing patterns in numbers is an important skill. It can also be pretty fun, like solving a puzzle. We'll look at a particular type of mathematical pattern, a sequence. A sequence is an ordered series of numbers. Once we understand the pattern behind the sequence, we should be able to figure out all of the numbers in the sequence. There are many different types of sequences, but we will look at two of the basic kinds, sequences based on addition and sequences based on multiplication. Not only are patterns all around us in the real world, they are also on our tests. Let's look at a question you may see on a standardized exam. That looks tough. Before we get too far along, let's look at an important real-world example. Sunspots are areas on the sun that have temporarily become colder than the surrounding areas. They usually cause intense electromagnetic activity, which can be strong enough to disturb radio and cell phone communications 93 million miles away. The table above shows years in which sunspot activity was much higher than usual. Based on this information, we must find when the next year of high sunspot activity will be. People are naturally skilled at finding visual patterns. Let's look at a bar chart of the years in the sequence. Can you tell what the next bar in the sequence should be? B. It's easy to see this pattern. There's a steady slope going upwards from one bar to the next. Pattern hunters depict numbers visually to help their search all the time. But how do we find the mathematical pattern? Let's investigate the relationship between two consecutive numbers in a sequence. What procedure must we perform to get from one number in the sequence to the next number? Let's begin by looking at the relationship between the first two numbers. What mathematical operation must you perform to get the second number from the first number? In other words, what must you do to 1957 to get to 1968? Add 9. Add 11. Add 22. Multiply by 11. Add 11. That's it. A sequence progresses in a regular way. But just because you add 11 to find the second number does not necessarily mean that adding 11 is the pattern for the sequence. So let's continue. What must you do to the second number to find the third? Subtract 11. Add 9. Add 11. Add 22. Add 11. That's it. If you investigate further, you find you only need to add 11 to get from one number in the sequence to the next number. Now that we know the pattern, what is the final number in the sequence? Enter your answer in the open box in the table above. Two thousand and twelve. That's it. Easy enough, right? Well, not all number sequences are so straightforward. Let's look at the original test question, which involves a different type of sequence, and apply the same strategy we just used for this problem. First, let's look at this pattern visually. This graph is much different from the last one we saw, but there's still a definite pattern. Which bar should be the next one in the sequence? A. That looks about right. Here, the visual pattern is slightly harder to recognize. But it's clear the curve connecting the tops of the bars gets steeper as it goes from left to right, like the edge of a teacup. Now let's look for the mathematical pattern. What operation must you perform on the first number to find the second? Add 9. Multiply by 4. Add 4. Both A and B. B. 
both A and B. Very good. Hmm. With two possible answers, our task is more difficult. However, we can test which option is the pattern by applying each of them to the rest of the sequence. So, what operation must you perform to find the third number from the second? Add 9. Multiply 4. Add 36. Both B and C. Both B and C. That's the correct choice. Both multiplying by 4 and adding 36 will get you 48. However, we're looking for a pattern, which means we want to find something similar in the relationships between consecutive numbers. After evaluating the rest of the sequence, what must you do to each number to find the next number? Add 9. Multiply by 4. Add 36. Both A and B. Multiply by 4. That's right. Now that we understand the pattern, what would be the next number in the sequence after 192? You may want to use the calculator provided in the corner of the screen. 192 multiplied by 4 equals 768. You got it. You found the fifth number in the sequence, but the exam question asks for the eighth number. Since you now know the pattern, you can just keep multiplying by 4. Fill in the remaining numbers in the table until you find the eighth number. 768 multiplied by 4 equals 3072. That's it. 3,072 multiplied by 4 equals 12,288. That's it. 12,288 multiplied by 4 equals 49,152. That's it. Now, we'll discuss one more type of number pattern. This one's a little tricky. Look at the relationships between each pair of consecutive numbers. Can you spot the pattern? Let's take a close look. What do you have to add to 11 to get to 13? 2. That's right. The difference between 11 and 13 is 2. To get from 11 to 13, you have to add 2. What do you have to add to 13 to get to 16? 3. That's right. The difference between 13 and 16 is 3. To get from 13 to 16, you have to add 3. What do you have to add to 16 to get 20? 4. That's right. The difference between 16 and 20 is 4. If you didn't see the pattern before, you may see it now. What is the next number in the sequence after 25? Enter your answer in the empty box above. Thirty-one. That's correct. To get from one number to the next in this sequence, the amount you have to add is always changing. But it's changing in a regular, predictable way. There's a pattern inside the pattern. To discover the pattern in a sequence, find the common mathematical relationship between each pair of consecutive numbers. If there is no common mathematical relationship between all pairs of consecutive numbers, look for a pattern in the sequence of differences between those pairs. If you're having trouble recognizing the pattern, try representing the numbers in the sequence visually. Use charts and graphs to reveal patterns to the naked eye. Grab a pencil and paper. We'll practice dealing with number sequences and patterns in 10 exercises. 
After each question, the answer will be explained. Are you ready? Number 1. What is the next number in the sequence? Sixty-three. That's right. The only common way to get from one number in the sequence to the next is to add 8. Therefore, you add 8 to 55 to find 63. Number 2. What is the next number in the sequence? 36 divided by 12 equals 3. 108 divided by 36 equals 3. 108 multiplied by 3 equals 324. That's it. The only common way to get from one number in the sequence to the next is to multiply by 3. So the next number in the sequence is 324. Number 3. What is the next number in the sequence? 27. That's correct. Find the differences between each sequential pair. To get from the first number to the second, add 2. To find the third number, add 4. To find the fourth, add 6. There's a pattern within the pattern. Increase the amount you add to each number by 2. To get the fifth number, add 8 to get 27. Number 4. The Fibonacci County Fair offers group rates for admission tickets. Using the table above, how much would it cost to buy 14 tickets? 55 subtract 48 equals 7. 62 subtract 55 equals 7. 69 subtract 62 equals 7. 69 to add 7 equals 76. Add 7 equals 83. Add 7 equals 90. Add 7 equals 97. Add 7 equals 104. That's correct. By finding the difference between each consecutive pair of numbers, you observe you need to add 7 to each number to find the next one. Then you add 7 to the $69 until you find the cost for 14 tickets, which is $104. Number 5. What is the previous number in the sequence? 8, 10, 21, 23. Eight. That's correct. We haven't looked at a question exactly like this yet. First, determine the difference between each sequential pair. It's three. Since we are finding the previous number in the sequence, you subtract three from eleven to find eight. Number six. All living organisms begin life from a single cell. That cell replicates until the organism is fully grown. Suppose each of these cells replicates at the same regular interval. How many cells should there be after six replications? Twenty-four cells, thirty-two cells, sixty-four cells, one hundred and twenty-eight cells. Sixty-four cells. That's correct. Notice that the common way to get from one number in the sequence to the next is to multiply by 2. Then you simply keep multiplying by 2 until you find the number at the sixth replication, 64. Number 7. What is the sixth number in the sequence? 3,700. That's right. 
First, notice how you add 50 to the first number to get the second, add 100 to get the third, and add 200 to get the fourth. There's a pattern within the pattern. The amount you add to each number doubles. So, you add 400 to get 2900, and add 800 to get 3700 to find the sixth number in the sequence. Number 8. A radioactive material's half-life is the time it takes for half of its atoms to decay. Depending on the material, half-lives can range from seconds to millions of years. This particular radioactive material was created in 1961, and its half-life has been recorded since. When will half of its atoms have decayed next? 2004, 2014, 2017, 2031. Two thousand and seventeen. That's correct. First, notice that the half life for this material is fourteen years. So you simply add fourteen to two thousand three to find the date of the next half life, two thousand seventeen. Number nine, what is the third number in the sequence? Twenty four divided by six equals four. Twenty four multiplied by four equals ninety six. Multiply by four equals three hundred and eighty four. Multiply by four equals one thousand five hundred and thirty six. Ninety six. That's right. First, notice the two ways you can get the second number from the first. There's also two ways to get the fifth number from the fourth. The relationship those two pairs of numbers share is multiplying by 4. So multiply the 24 by 4 to find the missing number, which is 96. Number 10. Using the table to the left, how many scoops of cool juice powder will you need to make 7 quarts of cool juice? 13 scoops, 15 scoops, 18 scoops, 21 scoops. Twenty-one scoops. That's correct. First notice that you must use three scoops for every new quart. So you keep adding three scoops to twelve until you have enough powder to make seven quarts of cool juice. Congratulations, you've completed the Patterns and Sequences module.